Panasonic just reported it has decreased, it will decrease production of its batteries. As a result, the insane US media have claimed that this means that Tesla has clearly not got any demand. It means that some, well, clearly there's a big problem with demand for Tesla vehicles as a result of Panasonic's decision, which actually is not that relevant to what Tesla does. And I'll explain why in a minute. However, as a result, Tesla stock price continued to fall. It's now down 25% over the past 25 days. But there's a lot more to this story. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And actually, really, Panasonic's decision here doesn't have a whole lot to do with Tesla. Now, Panasonic does manufacture batteries for Tesla. It in fact has a, a basically a joint venture with Tesla that um, manufactures batteries in Las Vegas. And in fact, Panasonic does plan on manufacturing 4680 cells for Tesla. They've apparently got pre-production pilot lines already up and running for those 4680 cells. Now, Automotive News, which I would expect better from, have reported that Tesla shares have fallen as production cut by its battery supply Panasonic has stoked fans' EV demand fears. Now, obviously, Wall Street and the global, basically the media in the United States have said that the reason for Panasonic's production cut is because Tesla doesn't have demand for its EVs. However, Panasonic isn't actually as important for Tesla as what people realize. Now, first of all, Panasonic have said it has cut automotive battery production in the September quarter, which apparently means that there is a global slowdown in electric vehicle sales. And is that actually true? No, it's not. It's actually more of a slowdown in demand for Panasonic 2170 cells, which are the cells it's slowing production down of. Panasonic, though, said its production suffered from slowing uptake for high-end EVs in North America, echoing Tesla CEO Elon Musk's comments from earlier this month that higher for longer borrowing costs would take a toll on vehicle demand. And it's true. I mean, interest rates are very high right now in the United States. It's also true that more borrowers are defaulting than what happened in 30 years, that more borrowers are behind by more than 60 days on their car repayments than what have been in 29 or nearly 30 years, I believe. Those, those things are true. However, Panasonic's warning of soft demand for Tesla's Model S and Model X cars has many concerns that global economic outlook could be in worse shape than initially believed, said Edward Moyer, senior market analyst at Onda. Now, the reality is, I mean, the Model S and the Model X, it's not really that significant, those two cars. They don't sell that many of them. So I don't believe Panasonic is very likely to cut production as a result of Tesla selling 20% less Model X or Model S. It's just not significant enough for a company to make that kind of decision. So model, mentioning the Model S and the Model X in this story, in my opinion, shows really a lack of understanding of what's really going on. And that is, it's a much more complex issue. For one, Tesla no longer uses 2170 or even 4680 cells in its base Model 3 or base Model Y. Of course, that's the bread and butter car for Tesla. More than 90% of Tesla sales in the United States and worldwide are the Model 3 and the Model Y. And in fact, the vast majority of those are the standard range. The standard range vehicles both now come with lithium iron phosphate batteries, not 4680s, not 2170s, but the batteries that Panasonic isn't capable of manufacturing. I mean, this really should give you a clear indication of the fact that Tesla is already moving away from Panasonic battery production before Panasonic's news this week. Earlier on Monday, General Motors reached a tentative deal with the UAW following deals by Ford and Chrysler owner Stellantis, potentially putting an end to disruptions that some analysts have said could give Tesla an edge. But at the same time, General Motors and Ford have paused much of their EV production plans over the next 12 months. Since the UAW strike began, Tesla shares have, however, fallen by 34% compared with a 30 to 33% decline in the share price of Ford and General Motors and a 33% rise, surprisingly, in Stellantis. Tesla investor Gary Black attributed the weakness in Tesla shares to chip maker on Simi's bleak forecast. Now, this may have more relevance than Panasonic battery production. 
On sells to automotive players with over 50% share of global EV sales, including four of the top five China EV makers, he said in a post on social media platform X. On CME CEO Hussein El Khoury said the company's top European clients were working to clear their inventory and noted the company sees increasing risk to automotive demand due to high interest rates. Weak demand will mount more pressure on Tesla's gross margins. It contracted to 18% between July and September from 25% a year earlier due to the EV makers' rampant price cuts, which triggered a price war in key markets such as China. But it's worth keeping in mind that the price that Tesla pays for batteries has come down pretty significantly as it uses more LFP cells from China, from CATL and BYD, its price for its cars actually falls. And that's what's been happening over the past few months. In addition to that, the Model 3, the new version, the Model 3 Plus, that it's already selling in China and Europe is cheaper for Tesla to make than the old version. And they are charging a higher price for the new version of the Model 3. Now that may help Tesla to claw back some margins. Now, like I said, Panasonic shrinking its 2170 cell production in Japan, which is what this story is actually about. It's not really a focus on Tesla's production in the North America, it's more about the Japanese factory, and that's been mentioned in numerous articles in Japan, actually is not really relevant to Tesla. Tesla's not buying 2170 cells from Japan. It's buying them from Panasonic or from its Panasonic joint venture in the United States. So it's kind of like a fabricated story here from the media who have decided, hey, let's just create this narrative and it's exciting and it'll sell. Now the truth to this story is obviously much more layered. The other truth here is this, Tesla is now manufacturing more of its own cells itself, not just using LFP cells from other manufacturers in more of its cars, but also making more 4680 cells. It's ramped up production of those vehicles. Now it may be true that Tesla's demand will go down over the next quarter, but I think it's actually going to increase. And the reason I say that is looking at Tesla Model Y sales already at the moment, they're still very strong. Now there is a an updated version of the Tesla Model Y that the US media haven't even heard about, don't even know about it. I don't know why they don't know, but they don't. It has a little bit more range. It has some nicer features. It has more power and it's no more expensive. Now, I think that will increase demand for that vehicle. And considering the Model Y standard range made in China is Tesla's highest selling model worldwide, that will be relevant. The other thing that's relevant here is that higher margin they'll make on the new Model 3, which I believe does have quite a few orders. It's a significant improvement. Many journalists have said very publicly, it's the best EV you can buy for the money at the moment, regard, pretty much regardless of price. They're talking sedans here, by the way, not crossovers or SUVs. So that's worth considering. I believe Tesla is probably going to do pretty well in the fourth quarter of the year. We're probably at the worst point now for Tesla, but I could be wrong on that. I am an optimist. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.